I'm here um, to talk about the Chevy Silverado and uh, PR communications, we use those terms interchangeably, um, and the role we played in launching the 2019 Chevy Silverado. So we'll get into that in just a minute. I think the uh, first thing um, they wanted me to do was say a little bit about myself. And uh, you see the picture there that was just taken at the uh, North American International Auto Show at the charity black tie event. And uh, my Spartan Patrick is on the right. And uh, Michael is a sophomore at Detroit Catholic Central. And then my lovely wife, Andrea. And uh, we live, I, I'm from Brighton High School. Caroline's from Heartland. So we have that Livingston County connection going on. Um, and uh, yeah, I graduated from Michigan State in uh, 1987. This building was brand new when, uh, when I was here um, a long time ago. I lived in Hubbard. It's a long walk from Hubbard to the Com Arts and Science building. I can attest to that. And then I lived in the Theta Chi Fraternity House after that. And I left uh, Michigan State and immediately uh, started working at General Motors. And that's how I have already 31 years of experience at GM. It goes by like that. Um, I would say the uh, highlights of my, uh, of my time there, certainly um, four years of running Chevrolet Communications would, would qualify as one of the real highlights, and um, certainly my, my current job in corporate giving and, and global communications. So uh, enough about oh, and internal communications. Leslie and I worked together in internal communications, at, uh, but she also used to work at Chevrolet comms, and once you're at Chevy, you always feel like you're at Chevy. So let's move on. Chevrolet, the brand, one of the great iconic brands the world over, and we're all honored to, to work there and to support the brand. Um, the brand is um, over 100 years old, and uh, the words of our founder, Louis Chevrolet, who was a race car driver before he founded the brand, never give up. And um, that's really been the, the foundation for Find New Roads, which is more than a tagline, it's more than an advertising theme. It's really about how we go to work every day, how we show up, and uh, it defines us and defines the character of the Chevrolet brand. But how do we get there? Get there by putting the customer at the center of everything you do. And um, Mary Barra is our chairman and CEO, and she has been since 2014. And you talk about consistency of message. When Mary took over, that was the first thing she said, was we are going to put the customer at the center of every decision that we make, everything that we do. And um, she's never wavered from that. And it, has, it seems kind of elementary, but when you're about to make a decision on a con content of a vehicle or anything that you're going to do, if you one last gate, one last check, what does this do for the customer? If you think about it from a lens of the customer, you're going to make a good decision. And Mary is the best, and she stuck to that message, and um, it has completely permeated the organization. So we're very proud of that. So um, before I get into talking about um, pickup trucks, which um, do leave a bit of a carbon footprint, and do you know um, they are propelled by fossil fuels. I want to make sure that you understand that we have a mission and it's driven by Mary. Mary is the one who came up with zero, zero, zero. And that is our vision for zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion. It's a long-term vision. We feel we can get there. Zero emissions will be all about uh, an electrified future. We do see going completely electric and getting away from the internal combustion engine over time. In the short term, that means 23, no, sorry, 20 new electric vehicles across the globe by 2023. 20 by 2023. So that will, that's, we already have the Bolt EV, of course, out there um, that's all electric. And we're just going to continue to roll that out uh, throughout the course of uh, the next few years. And our long-term long vision is everything we make will be electric. Zero crashes is really important. That's our autonomous vehicles. That's two vehicles that will you know, talk to each other, talk to the infrastructure, and never run into each other. Um, we're better than this. Our society loses, in the US, 40,000 people a year die on our roads. That's unacceptable. We're smarter than that. We're better than that. And GM's going to lead the way toward making sure that we, uh, we drive to zero. 
And then zero congestion is all about also with regard to our autonomous vehicles. If, you're, um, if, if they're fully autonomous, we can get smarter about how we deploy those vehicles at different times of day such that we would um, knock down on the congestion because we all spend way too much time in traffic. But enough about zero, zero, zero. Right now we're going to talk about how we're going to get there. Make no mistake, a vehicle like the Chevrolet Silverado is going to, it allows us to fund the future that we just, that I just described. We make a lot of money on pickup trucks and we sell a lot of pickup trucks and it's the core business, cars, trucks, and crossovers, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, that core business is what's going to fund the future. Um, batteries are expensive, autonomous vehicles being developed, that's expensive. We need to get there, but how do you get there? You sell a bunch of pickup trucks. So let's talk a little bit about our role in the launch of the Chevy Silverado. Our role meaning communications. Um, it starts with us. We're the ones who pick where we're going to unveil the vehicle for the first time when we're going to do that, how we're going to do that. Certainly we work with our marketing and advertising colleagues. We work with engineering and design. We work with the folks. Those first trucks that we show, cars, trucks, whatever, when we first unveil them and you see it on the news or you see it in the paper, that's basically a hand-built one-off prototype. We haven't even started building them in the assembly uh, plant yet. So we have to work well in advance to get the vehicle as perfect as possible. Um, and then we figure out the messaging, we create assets of video and uh, infographics and, and video, uh, excuse me, and photographs. And we start to talk about the stories. We talk about the powertrains, we talk about the design, we talk about the interior and all the things that uh, are gonna make this story separate the, 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 our vehicle from, from the pack. And um, so as it relates to the Silverado, let me take you back about 14 months, and that was uh, December of 2017. And uh, actually, I'm going to take you back even further. We're at the, at the uh, State Fair of Texas, which is in September every year. Huge truck presence. I mean, Texas is the, is the uh, capital of, of pickup trucks in our country. And we had, uh, we were celebrating 100 years of Chevrolet trucks. And we had um, customers, media, everyone gathered together. We have this group of customers that we've really engaged with called Truck Legends. And these are the folks that put two and three and four and 500,000 miles on their vehicle. They're the ones that when they're done, they buy another one. And anytime you can bring forth that energy of a loyal uh, customer who loves his truck, it just, it just adds to any, uh, any event or activation that you do. So we invited the Truck Legends. And we introduced the centennial version of our previous truck. You know, it's a nice t hat tip. Some people go out and they get a nice logo. It says 100 years of Chevrolet. Pay a little extra for the, for the logo on the, on the vehicle. Um, and so there you have it. It was celebrating a, a decade of, uh, or a century rather, of, of dependability. That's our, our, uh, the centennial version. And that's obviously a, a heritage Chevrolet pickup truck. So, go ahead, Les. Trucks play such an important part of, uh, of Chevrolet's DNA. We also have, um, it should be pointed out, um, another division. I mentioned it before, GMC. So the Chevy Silverado is the best-selling vehicle we have. Uh, number two is the GMC Sierra. 
um, built on the same platform but differentiated, sold through different markets, sold to different customers. But I'll get into some numbers in a little bit about just how many of these vehicles we sell as an, as an enterprise. So we're done with the State Fair of Texas. Three months later, we're back in Texas at the Texas Motor Speedway. And we pull folks together uh, ostensibly as a 100-year anniversary. And um, what they didn't know is they were going to get a chance to be the first people in the world to see the brand new Silverado. So we uh, invited media customers, truck legends. It was a big deal. And I'll show you a video of the, the actual um, sneak peek, if you will. And it was a surprise to the folks that were there. So that was the end, uh, just before the holiday break at the end of 17. And then we took a holiday break. And then um, for those of you in the Detroit area, area know that the big event in January um, is the North American International Auto Show. So it was no surprise to anybody that we elected to unveil our franchise truck at the biggest auto show in the United States. We did that on the evening before uh, the show actually opened. We went to um, Eastern Market in, uh, in Detroit, and um, we unveiled um, the 1500, which is the half ton, and that's uh, the light duty version, if you will, of the Silverado. Um, go. The next, uh, so we're on, a, we're on a path here. All the while, Marketing and advertising is building up their assets for point of sale, for, uh, for the, the advertising, the direct mail, all the things that they're on digital, all the things they're trying to do to, to generate buzz and interest and um, obviously ultimately sales. But they're still a ways away. So uh, we showed it to the world in January. And in August, we were ready to, we had production vehicles that had rolled down the line. We make sure they're perfect, and we send them out to, in this case, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, where the uh, automotive and especially the truck media get a chance to put it through their, through their paces. If you can get good hits out of Truck Trend and PickupTrucks.com, it sets the tone for everything else. And, you know, the, it's exactly what the goal is. But we had 100 media. It's five days, 20 media per day, and they come in. They have access to the trucks, they have access to the experts, the engineers, the designers, the marketers. We feed them, we give them a nice place to sleep, we tear, let them go and they go tear up the, 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 the path, the, the, the route that we've pre, uh, previously identified. And um, you know, then they go home and hopefully on the plane they write a really glowing review of the truck, that's the goal. And um, so the stories uh, started hitting in line with when the trucks would be at dealership. So if you pick up your truck trend and there's 
it, then you say, well, I'm going to go down to the Chevrolet store and see what's, see what's up. That's why we time it that way. We sold 30,000 Chevrolet Silverados before any advertising hit. In fact, the advertising hit at this year's, earlier this, in uh, 2019, um, at the uh, National Championship football game um, between Clemson and Alabama. So well, I talked before about the importance of trucks. Take a look at this, almost 1 million trucks sold by General Motors. That's combining the uh, Chevrolet and GMC, our half ton full, uh, and our, and our three-quarter ton and our one ton, plus we have the Chevrolet Colorado and GMC Canyon. So it's a boatload of trucks. And then uh, I think the fourth year in a row, we sold more trucks than anybody else, and that's a big deal. So here's our timeline again. State Fair of Texas onto the Motor Speedway, North American Auto Show, the media drive, started selling the vehicle in the fall, and now it's time to, to really, once the pipeline is full and there's enough cars and, or trucks in the dealership lots, that's when you want to go full-fledged with an unavoidable burst of advertising activity to really generate buzz. And that's the mode we're in right now with the half ton. So the ad of the all new, and we call it the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. That's an example of the print ad. And I'm going to give you an example of the, uh, oh, first I want to, yeah, just uh, another example here of, of print. And um, we're trying to keep the base, the people that are loyal, those truck legends that I talked about, we want to invigorate them and keep them in our family. But then you got you got to target new people. You got to target the, the folks that are loyal to the F-150 or to the Ram and uh, grow the franchise and capitalize on as much migration as you could possibly get. So this, uh, for the, your parents probably would remember a, a, sh a show in the 70s called um, Donnie and Marie. It was the Osmonds. And they had a song on there, a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. It was pretty schmaltzy and it was, you know, and so when they told me, I'm not in advertising, they just told me, hey, we're gonna do the Silverado ad is going to be a play on a little bit country, a little bit rock and roll. I got to say, I was a little bit surprised. Um, but I think they executed it brilliantly, and I'll show you the ad right now. Kudos to the casting director for that one, too, you know, from the Native American man to the guy with the fish to the, 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 the variety, the diversity of folks that, um, that they showed in there. I thought they did a really nice job with that ad. Uh, and so that, that debuted last month. And um, then another ad that I'll show you quickly, a 60-second spot, uh, the official truck of real people. I would say this is getting less airtime than the than the first one.
So now we're in, in the mode of um, really full execution on the half ton. And uh, that's adequate supply in dealer lots. The sell down of the old truck is going really well. We're going to continue to build those concurrent with the new just to keep those profits rolling, keep those dealer lots full. A lot of folks come in and they want the all-new Silverado. they got to have the latest and greatest, but some people come in with maybe more price consciousness, and they'll say, hey, you know, if you're offering a little bit of a deal on the old one, I'll, I'll try the old one. So um, that, is, uh, that is where we are. Um, we're not, no one's going to make more truck news this year, though, because uh, we're not done. In fact, just this week, up in Flint, Michigan, at the Flint assembly plant, where we build the Chevrolet Silverado and GMC Sierra heavy duty. So this is the 2500 series. It's the three quarter ton, the one ton. These are the ones that work hard. These are the ones that construction companies buy in bulk. And uh, these are the ones, sometimes you see them, they have dual rear wheels. They take up the entire lane. They're massive. And um, you can tell from these, these photos. That's our president, Mark Royce, who unveiled the, uh, the HDs. This was on Tuesday of this week. So these pictures are, are fresh. Uh, the grill on that one, you can see on the right, is it's just a, the top of the grill is just about where, you know, right here. It's, it's pretty intimidating. It's pretty awesome. Um, so we're proud of those. Though now we're in the same mode. Now we will wait six, eight months before we take them out and drive them. And then by the end of the year, the advertising will start on them. So we're running, you know, all of 19 or 18 was all about the the uh, building up for the, for the light duty ones. 19 is all about building up for the heavy duty ones, which will be driving and selling by the end of the year. Made right here in Flint, Michigan. So um, that is the journey that we are on with regard to Chevrolet. Um, we, uh, I, I want to open it up for Q&A and dialogue, and any question about anything is fair game. Um, I will tell you, I was here a year ago um, to speak to this class at a time when Michigan State was in a bit of a, uh, you know, a crisis. Um, we talked about that a little bit. Um, GM's in a bit of a crisis right now as well, and um, Mary had to make a, a tough call in her leadership team. Um, back in November, we closed some plant. We announced we're intending to close some plants just this week. Um, about 3,400 of uh, Leslie's and, and my colleagues um, were, were asked to leave. Uh, earlier in the fall, um, another couple thousand elected to leave. So we're in a mode where it um, doesn't feel very good. It's starting to feel a little better. Um, goodbyes are hard. Uh, we do feel better about the fact that the folks that had to leave are going into a job market that is robust. You know, unemployment's below 4%. We've had cuts like this before, and we had to cut people and put them out into a job market that where unemployment was 11%, and that, that really hurt. Because what, what ended up happening is a lot of people had to leave the state to go find work. Um, so with that as a backdrop, anything is fair game. I also cover international communications, global communications for the company. So if you have questions about things outside of, uh, of the US, um, happy to take those. I also um, give away money for a living, um, corporate giving, um, philanthropy. And so um, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have about that. So we'll open it up for questions.